Hello, what's good, lovely people? This is your boy Minati Forum back again. And as usual, anytime you see me, you know it's all about promoting tourism in Ghana. The location for today is the Shy Hills Resource Reserve. I think it's about 51 square kilometers of a forest reserve. Charlie, we are going to be exploring the place. A lot of activities here, such as the rock climbing, viewing of caves. We have the museum, and then there's also a library here as well. So stay tuned and keep watching. Alright, so please, there were some people that lived in here before. They were called the Se people. Uh, they migrated from Nigeria, a particular place called Ileife. So they walked on foot and also settled at some places before getting here. But because of these tribal wars, they were not able to settle at those places for long as they did here. So they arrived here in the early 1000s and they stayed up to 1892 uh, before they were expelled from this place by the British army. So the British said the same people were not paying tax to their government and also they trap other people that uses the trails in the reserve for butter trading. So these people trap them and take their belongings and their involvement in tribal wars. So these were their reasons why they sacked them from this place in 1892. So during their stay, there were four tribes in the reserve, that's Manyayu, Ejuku, Sayo and Hiroyo. So they settled on the hills in some of the caves that we visit now because it provides for them natural defense against their enemies those days. So um, the colonial masters find it difficult pronouncing the same se and also do not know what it means. So they adopted the name Shai, uh, which we call them till date. So their, their original name was Se before they changed it to Shai. Yeah. So, their settlement starts from the Sayo Cave, uh, where their tribal chief once lived. And we also have the highest hill is the Heweyo. Uh, on top of the hill there we have a smaller cave where they hide their war drum called the Obunu Tempem. So whenever something there is danger or something is going on, they play the drum in that cave for all the tribes to hear and then know how to prepare for it as well. And we also have Manya. Uh, so till date when you get to that's the second largest settlement they had. So to date we had some of their house collapse walls, their water pond, their old maternity ward, the shrine and some other stuff on top of that hill there. And we also have a uh, Juku cave. That's where they hide the elderly ones, the young ones, pregnant women during these war days as well. And this is Mogo, where they used to camp their young girls that were of age to go through the puberty rite also known as the depot. So they camp the girls here for six months and take them through all they need to know before they start seeing a man or they get married. So how to take care of themselves as ladies, uh, preparing of their local dishes, their dressing, taking care of the house chores, how to make beads, pots, and then so many things. So over here, they camp them here for six months. So it's only ladies allowed here, the old ladies that will take the young ones through all those things. So before a lady would partake in this, she should be a virgin as well. So whenever they bring the ladies here, they had their own way of checking it or they had a stool, uh, which wasn't ordinary. So they allow the ladies to sit on that stool one after the other. So when you sit on it and you are able to get up freely, that way they know you are a virgin. But when you get stuck on the seat, it means you are not. And some rituals will need to be performed before you'll be able to get up. And... It comes with a punishment if you are not a virgin as well and come here you can be banished away from this whole place with your whole family for that so after the six months they use the same place as their deba that's to introduce them to their womanhood and also they give them some marks on the skin some on the wrist some on the belly some on the back and some other places so any man or anybody that sees those marks on you knows you've been through this training and you are ready for marriage or you are capable of doing all those things. So the one on the wrist means you are capable of taking care of the house choice and you know more about uh, maybe preparing of the local dishes and more. The one on the belly also means you are ready to carry the man's unborn kids and when you give birth to carrying them at your back and stuff as well. So on top of the hill, we have some man-made groove uh, that shows where they grind their spices for food, herbs for medication as well, glasses for beads as well. So please, we'll be climbing with the rope to the top to check them out. Yeah. 
So one thing is for sure, when you come to the Shy Hills Resource Reserve, you are going to have a great rock climbing experience. So I'm still on it. Wow, the view here is crazy. I can't wait to show it to you guys. Wow, just, just look at the view right behind me. Isn't it lovely? Uh, so we are done with the rock climbing and then we are moving on to check out the caves down there. Uh, during their puberty, they sleep here for about six months. Okay. Oh, wow, it's slippery here. We are done with the rock climbing and checking out the caves. So we are now moving on to the animal farm and then probably we check out the museum. So I'm here with my Gredek senior man, Gridek Lama, yeah, my friend since the 80s, you know. Yeah. Okay, so stay tuned. We out here. Yeah, so we're currently at the animal farm. But unfortunately, um, it seems the zebras are grazing far down there. So i'll try and come back to see if i can get shots of the zebras and kindly you can see one ostrich so here we have one one male ostrich i'm really scared to go closer you know uh, check out the baboons Natural and cultural heritage at Chai Hills. It's built for like 20 years now and it's uh, in the shape of a bat. So we just look at the wings of a bat. So you take a look at this shape, the side side ones. The middle will also represent the hills in the reserve and then inside as a cave. So this museum, they were looking forward to build it in the shape of an animal, but you you've not been to the sayo cave the sayo cave after these people were sacked that's where their tribal chief once lived and the the bat occupied the cave all so uh, building this museum they they just thought it twice to build to put it in the form of the bat and then as well the the hill to represent the sorry the wall to represent the hills and then inside as a cave just like the sayo cave where the bats are and then, so we have the natural aspect, which uh, is the skin and the skull of the wild animals. And we also have some artifacts that were picked from the caves and places they live, which are the, the cultural aspect. And we have the digital room, the library, and then the picture gallery in there. So please, let's get in and take a look. So we have these artifacts also that were picked from the places they live. These are some of the things they used back then. So the original ones, they mold themselves and used like plates, pots, and sort of things. And these ones are the foreign ones. So they got these ones during the butter trading days. Uh, so the European pots, the snaps. So people come in with this in an exchange of the treasure, any form of treasure you have to offer as well. So these ones were molded some few months ago. And these are some of their pots. So they designed these pots according to what they use them for. So a pot for water storage has its own design, maybe a different one for preparing food. And so whenever you see those designs, you know what exactly they use that pot for. And some grinding stones that they use at the top there as so well. A quota from Kuma land in the north, representing the faces of our ancestors. So with no phone or camera to take footage of anything this, uh, back then, 
they make good use of the clay in molding all these things so a lot of them are faces of human beings and some are animals during their time of migration also they encounter some kind of animals that disturbs them maybe killed some of them and stuff so they also mold it show it to their children and some other people that have not come across it so whenever you meet these things you know what they are and then know how to go about it as well and this uh, from the stone age era where there wasn't anything like metals for knives or cutlasses anything so they designed some of these stones for the use of cutting so like scratching it on something a wood or something to cut it yeah and with these smaller ones they fix them in a kind of bone like this for also for cutting and maybe the marks and designing as well and those ones for lightning fire as well and that's an example of the excavation work done by the archaeologists so all this we are seeing here these are the processes they pass through before getting all these things so this is an example of what they do so before you'll be able to get something at least you you dig a bit here yeah. you dig and then you get something at least you have to clean before you know what it is and stuff what they use them for so it's just an example of their work so the library is here you should feel like it's in the library too the animals we have and that's the skull of a zebra yeah the hunters skull of a buffalo the cop so the western uh, the buffon cop sorry so the stripes on the horn is also what we use to determine their age okay they get one of these stripes every year and that's the skull of a black back <laughs> yeah, elephant scar and the giant tattoos as well. They have the skin of a hedgehog, the quill of a porcupine. And this is the lower jaw, the elephant. So the scar and the lower jaw. And the lower jaw of a small one. And this is the thigh bone of a small elephant as well. The skull of a hippopotamus, crocodile. This for the baboons. That's a gene trap, so for the antelopes and some other big animals like the wild cat. And it's the tusk or an ivory of the elephant. And the male several cat preserved. So that is real. It's yeah. Real. So the intestine were taken out oh, and the so eyes too. Right. But the whole thing is real. Oh, it's real. <laughs> so this is a Oh yes, they are. Yeah, they are very wild. Like they mm -hmm. are like bush cat, like yeah, they are bush. bush yeah, cats. yeah. So they are very wild. Very wild. Very wild. Also, especially this the civet cats, just like how hyenas. Yeah, 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 that's the same way. That's the shell of um, ostrich that's egg. True. So it it weighs one point three kg. That's equivalent to one full crate of the poultry eggs. Yes. Uh, ostrich egg. We have some grass carpets, the hedgehog, and the bags made of crocodile skin down there. So a lot of these things were seized from people that were trying to export them and killing these animals, preserving them just to decorate their offices, homes and stuff, which is not uh, allowed. We also have some reptiles and amphibious others who are under preservation. So they are all dead, but there's a chemical on them that will keep them here for a very long time. Yo guys, so Charlie, we've come to the end of another episode. When you hear Minati for Raw, you know it's all about promoting Ghana to Ghanaians and to the world through travel and tourism. I had a great time with my friend. Gradek Lama, you can find me on Facebook. Just go Gradek Lama, that's all. And then don't forget to follow my page, Minati for Raw, for more tourist locations in Ghana. I'll see you guys when I see you. Stay safe. I'm out. Be out here. Peace, bro. Out.